I hope you guys are ready for a good rankings video. As you can see by the title, we are doing my Huda Beauty palettes. I have 20 palettes here today to rank from worst to best. I just excluded the palettes that honestly are irrelevant and forgotten at this point. Like I have some of the very first Jewel Obsessions and the Neon Obsessions. I was like, nobody cares about those. Yeah, we have 20 left. So if you wanna see my rankings, then just keep watching. Let's start off with number 20, the current least favorite palette in my collection, and that is the Toffee Brown Obsessions palette. I did not like this whole collection from Huda Beauty. I really feel like the quality just is not up to par here. So this one comes in last because I don't really care for the color story. Like, it's fine. I actually think it's pretty unique within the Huda Beauty line, but the quality is really not good here. This shade hardly shows up. The shimmers you have to press really hard to get any pickup, and the mattes are just okay. Just knowing the quality that Huda Beauty can put out, it's like, why didn't she do that with this? Because this is not good. So yeah, this is my least favorite palette. Number 19 is another palette from that collection. I just think overall this collection just wasn't it. This is the Caramel Brown palette. So this one is a little bit too warm for me. I personally tend to go towards more like cooler toned shadows. And I think the quality of this is a bit better than the Toffee palette, but it's still it's like this swirl shade right here is really really bad the shimmers are okay not the best that Huda can do the mattes a little bit of a struggle to blend out so it's just not the best quality wise from Huda and it's also not my favorite story color wise number 18 is the sand haze palette the quality on this one isn't terrible it's definitely better than the brown obsessions palettes but i really just can't get down with this color story i don't really like it i never really want to reach for it i don't think i've really used it since like my last video that I did on it, which was probably like two years ago. And it's just because I don't like this color story. The quality is like pretty average. It's not the greatest, but it's also not the worst, like the brown obsessions. But I just don't like the color story on this one. Number 17 is a really old one. I actually didn't expect them to still have this in stock, but they do have Sephora, so I threw it in here. This is the Ruby Obsessions palette. Now, I like this palette because I don't have really another palette like this in my collection, but quality-wise, it doesn't really show up on your eyelid how it looks in the pan. So your look kind of tends to be like a hot pink with this, and that's just not what I'm going for. I want it to be more red and ruby, just as the name would suggest. So it doesn't translate as good on the eyes, but it still is quite quite unique in my opinion. It just is that translation thing that I don't love about this. So quality wise, it's not the best, but I do definitely keep it around because it is very unique in my collection. And this I believe is from her first round of launches for these obsession palettes. So this is quite old at this point. I'm pretty sure eventually she'll get rid of these for good, but yeah, I'm surprised they still had that. Number 16 is the last from the Brown Obsessions collection. This is the Chocolate Browns. So this by far is my favorite color story and I actually, I don't want to say I reach for this a lot. I definitely don't, but of the Brown Obsessions, this is the one I reach for the most because I really do enjoy this color story. It gives you like a deep brown smoky eye, which I think is really, really pretty. I love really dramatic neutral toned kind of eyes and I think that this one gives it to me. But just along with the other two in this collection, the quality is not the greatest from put it here these shimmers i feel like you gotta press kind of hard it can get a little messy on the eye just nothing in here is like that good you know i just like the color story <laughs> number 15 is the purple haze obsessions palette this one of course i like it because it's purple if you're new here i love purple colors. The shadows here aren't as intense as I would like them to be. The Haze Obsessions, better than the Brown Obsessions, but I don't know, I'm just not in love with this as a purple palette. The quality is good, but it's not great. I don't know, this is just where it fell. I like it. <laughs> okay, from this point on, I actually really do like the palettes. I don't have too much to complain about, and this is why I don't have much to say because the quality is good. This is just where it landed. Number 14 is the Khaki Haze Obsessions. Originally, I think I think I placed purple above the khaki, but khaki is such a trendy color now that I've been reaching for khaki shades a lot more, and I think this is a really 
great khaki palette here. I find some of the mattes can be a little difficult to blend out, but it's definitely worth it because I do find this to be a pretty unique color story and I love the looks that I can get with this. So with this and the other haze palettes, generally speaking. They're not the most pigmented. They're a little bit softer, but they're very, very easy to work with. So this isn't like the best quality khaki palette that I have in my collection, but it's definitely workable. It's very pretty. I enjoy this color story a lot. I do recommend this if you're looking for a really good khaki colored palette. Number 13 is the Amethyst Obsessions palette. So this is an older palette. Again, I'm very surprised that they still sell this, but I absolutely love the color story here. I think one of Huda's strengths is her color curations. Her palettes are so well thought out. Love this purple palette. It again doesn't translate on the lids like I would want it to. Sometimes these pull more pink than purple but the colors here are just so pretty. I like this one better than the purple haze palette because I just simply like the colors in here better. They're a little bit more punchy and they're more true like grape kind of purples and I command a brand that will come out with the grape colored purples instead of playing it safe <laughs> because those can be harder to work with and harder to just master that formula. No, but I really really like this. There are some flaws to it but color story wise I think it's one of the best curated purple palettes on the market. Number 12 is the Wild Jaguar palette. We're coming up on a new kind of Obsessions palette here. How beautiful is this one? I like cool tone neutrals. This screams cool tone neutrals to me. Now the reason that this isn't like not my number one because this is my kind of color story is because there's a little bit too much glitters in here. So it's hard to get a really intricate look with this. You don't have too many options. It's kind of like you put two eyeshadows on the lid and you have to head out. You can't do too much with these glimmery shades. It can get a little messy, but so beautiful. Love this color story. These Wild Obsessions palettes, the quality is really, really nice as well. So if you've been into these kind of colors, I really like this one. I think it's really great. Number 11, also from the same collection, is the Wild Python palette. Now this one is just simply fun. So I'm ranking this where I'm ranking it because it really is such a unique palette in her line. You can get some pretty crazy looks. The one flaw to this is that the shimmer shades don't pack as much pigment or as much of a base color as I would like. So for example, if you put these on your bare lid, you're gonna see your lid underneath. I don't really like that look. So in order to get this palette to work, you definitely wanna put the mattes down all over the lid and then put the shimmers on top, more so as an eye topper. I don't love that. I want these colors to be able to stand out on their own and they just don't but the looks I get with this are so pretty that I can't complain too much. Number 10, oh I didn't even realize I placed these right down the row but I guess I did. This is the Wild Chameleon palette. So this one is my favorite of the Wild Obsessions palettes and surprisingly it is warm but there's something about the quality in this that I feel is just a little better than the others and there's a purple in here so instantly it's okay and I actually really like the combo of very warm shades with purple. I find those tones to be very complementary towards one another and yeah the quality on this one is like better than the others and I've loved every look that I've come up with this so I ended up liking this one a lot more than I thought I would. Number nine is the Nude Light Palette. This by far if you're looking for the best Obsessions palettes which tend to be a little bit more affordable you need to pick up from the Nude Line as long as you like the color. So this is the Nude Light. This is my least favorite of the Nude Obsessions but it still is really beautiful and I don't think I ranked this quite as high last time because I wasn't as into pastel-y type shades because this is pretty light. It's almost a pastel palette. So the reason why I'm putting it more towards the top today is because this last year I've really learned to appreciate looks that don't necessarily have a lot of depth and I think this just has a lot of really pretty lid options for just a light airy wide awake kind of look been enjoying this and the quality is really nice. Number eight is the Desert Dusk palette. So this is the first big palette. Now I have to say with her big palettes, typically I prefer the formulations in them, which is why you will see that they are ranking higher than the Obsessions palettes. The Obsessions palettes can be a little bit hit or miss. 
These, almost always a hit. So this is a Desert Dusk palette, and this is one of my favorite color stories because it does have that warm and purple mix here, but this is not her best quality of the big palettes. I found that this palette does not have the longest lifespan and that the shades almost dry out, which I don't love because these are quite expensive. So while it is a gorgeous palette, I just can't rank it at the top anymore, and it used to be ranked at the top, but that is because the quality definitely does go down over time. Number seven is the Nude Medium Palette. So this is the one that I'm wearing today. It had been a hot minute since I'd worn this palette, so I thought I'd wear it today. And uh, I love this palette. It is so beautiful. The only thing is, I wish this shade gave a little bit more depth. I know it's supposed to be the medium depth palette, but I did want something kind of darker to put out here. But other than that, the quality is really great. The mattes blend out beautifully. The shimmers are on point. Look at my makeup today. Love the look. So these are really great to work with. You'll enjoy the quality a lot if you like the color story. And I love this color story. I think it's pretty having the pinks and a little bit of copper there. Love that copper pop. Number six, I have the Huda Beauty, of course, Rose Gold Remastered Palette. So she had an older one. This was years ago and it was really, really dry and she reformulated it. And I wish she would formulate more palettes like these. So I look at this, it really is kind of a very classic color story. The time that it came out, it was the era of ABH Modern Renaissance. So those tones very much speak to that time. I love the way that these shimmers feel. They feel super duper creamy. Now I did just repurchase a new one of these over the holidays because I got a pretty good deal, but I do think they do dry out. Because my mom's one, hers is older. It's just not as creamy as this one here but when they're creamy absolutely beautiful but just make sure you take care of it and be aware that the shadows may dry out but they're so creamy that I let it pass because they're so beautiful. Number five is the nude rich palette so this is the last of the nude palettes this one is my favorite i don't care if you have a light medium or rich skin tone love this one so much it gives the prettiest kind of cranberry burgundy type eye i'm just gonna put a little bit of this burgundy shade like right in the outer corner like this is what i wanted right here just something like this in that medium palette just like a touch you almost just need a dot Love this one so much. The quality is really great on this. The value is phenomenal for the price that you pay. And I love the varying tones here. If you like these kind of rich cranberry burgundy eyes, you will love this one. Number four is a very similar palette. It's kind of a step up. This is the Naughty Nude palette. I absolutely love this one. This one has those deep, rich burgundy tones which typically aren't the type of colors that i reach for on an everyday basis but this is a beautiful one i truly do not have anything bad to say about this palette other than this weird guy right here but other than that it's great it's just not a color story that i reach for constantly so based on sheer number of use is why it's not number one but i don't have anything bad to say about it if you enjoy this really rich color story and by the way i did notice that that palette Looks so good on rich skin tones. If you don't have it, I recommend it. Number three is the New Nude Palette. Now this is a personal favorite for me. If you have more of a rich skin tone than me, I definitely recommend Naughty Nude over New Nude. But because I've learned to more so appreciate like the lighter, more pastel-y kind of eyes, and I love mauve looks, this one has been perfect for me. Now what I don't love about this is how they translate on the eyes. I think this palette definitely pulls more pink than they look in the pan, which I don't love that, but I still love the looks that I create from this palette and I just reach for it more than the Naughty Nude palette. I enjoy the quality of this one and Color Story is what is pushing this one towards the top. I just think it's so pretty for an everyday palette for myself. Now when I tell you number one and two were in battle, it was tough. I was like really weighing out the options here. Ultimately, I decided that number two was the brand new Rose Quartz palette, but just know it's 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 almost number one. <laughs> so this is the one that came out this holiday season. I love it because it has more cooler kind of purple tones. I love every single look that I come up with when it comes to this palette. It's unique, but it's still not too bold. It's still wearable, but you still can have a lot of playroom with this and experiment. The quality is phenomenal. The shimmers here, 
Oh my goodness, extra glimmery, extra reflective. I love it. So I, I don't have anything bad to say about it, like at all. But that leaves the reigning champion to win once again this year, the Mercury Retrograde. Now these two, in my opinion, go hand in hand. So take a look at Mercury Retrograde. It's just a little bit more experimental with the colors. You have the purple row, you have more of a blue row as well. I just think that this palette is a little bit more fun, which is why I'm putting it at number one over rose quartz it's interesting though rose quartz i'm more likely to grab for for every day so this one is probably getting more used by me but it's all about the inspiration for me with this one this is such a unique palette there really isn't a palette like this on the market like it except for rose quartz but rose quartz is more wearable i would say still reigning champion i mean it deserved to be recrowned as number one because it really is a special palette and i do believe it's on sale on sephora for like 33 dollars right now totally worth it if you're thinking about it it's my favorite and there we have it you guys those are all of my Huda Beauty palettes ranked from worst to best. Let me know what palettes you have in your collection and how would you rank them. Give yourself a little bit of a challenge. Comment down below. With that being said, thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.